All right, let's look at one more example before we do the formal definition. So what is this? This is taking something in R2, and it's going to give me something in R3. So in this case, if you take some vector here in R2, you're going to get some vector in R3. And so now if I say this is going to be equal to something in R3, this is going to be UVW. If I look at the augmented matrix, put this in reduced row echelon form. Now I worked this out in advance, so I'm just going to tell you what I get when I put this in reduced row echelon form. I can find it in my notes. This comes out to be 1, 3, U for the top, 0, 0, V minus 2, U for the second row, and the third row turns out to be 0, 0, U plus W. All right. Now, is this, uh, let's go with onto first. If I look at this, I notice there are two rows here that do not have pivots. So that means this cannot be onto. Why is that? Because I have to have v minus 2u equals 0 for this to be consistent because of that. And because of that, I have to have u plus w equals 0. Otherwise, this is not consistent. I can't solve this. This doesn't make sense. 0 has to equal that. 0 has to equal that. So there are limitations on uh, what uh, ve vector I pick in u in order to solve this. Okay? And in fact, if you look at this, if you notice, this vector and this vector are linearly dependent. Right? 3 times this gives me this. So really what's going on here is that all my solutions are going to be along this line given in that direction. So if I look at any vector here, it's going to, after I take the transformation, it's going to be somewhere along that line. So any vector off that line, I cannot solve that. Okay, so the domain, or sorry, the range of t is restricted to the co to a subset of the codomain. So this cannot be onto. Next question is: If you give me a vector that happens to be, be along that line, and everything's okay, and it's in the range, is there a unique value of x? But now. I look at the columns, you notice in the columns only one column has a pivot. So that means, right, so what does this say? This says that uh, x plus 3y equals u. Right? u is a number that's given to me. That's whatever vector that is, that's uh, given to me. There's going to be infinite solutions here because you give me a value for y that determines x. And I can give you any number for y, which means I'm going to have many values for x. So this is not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so this is an example of a function, a linear transformation, that is neither onto nor one-to-one. -one. All right, so what's the definition? Uh, so we're going to have a transformation. Uh, we're going to mostly work with linear transformations here, but notice that's not uh, necessary here. Uh, the domain is Rn. The codomain is Rm. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the definition for one-to-one. -one. And if I, uh, so I'm looking at Tx equals b. If this, you give me any b that happens to be in the range, if there's exactly one x that makes this work, then the function, is, or I should say the linear transformation is one-to-one. -one. Uh, the wording in your book says that if you give me any vector b, there's at least one solution. So what that's saying in the book is that if b is in the range, there's one solution. If b is not in the range, there's no solutions, and that's okay. So in either of those two cases, if both of those cases are true, or have to be true, then the function's one-to-one. -one. Uh, another way to look at this is that if I tell you that t of u is equal to t of v, and if I tell you that t is 1 to 1, 
the only way that can be true is if u equals v. Uh, likewise, if I tell you that t is not equal to t of e, then that means u can't be v. All right. Um, so there's going to be some properties that come out of this. Um, so one of the things here is this, is that if I give you a vector b, and I tell you there's either one or zero solutions to the equation, I'm sorry, if I tell you that it's one to one, then that means there, uh, there has to be either uh, one or zero solutions to that. That's basically the definition. Um, now, in terms of that, what does that mean? Because, i got to be careful, this is a linear transformation. If it's a linear transformation, that means then there's a matrix associated with this T that looks like that. So if T is a linear transformation, I can write it like that. Then this has 0 or 1 solutions. Right? So it's not possible for this to have infinite solutions. The other thing is that if I tell you AX equals 0, and I tell you that it's a linear transformation that's 1 to 1, then that means X has to be 0. right? Because why is that? Because if I take A times 0 is 0, that means T of 0 is 0. Be careful, this is a, a 0 vector in Rn. This is a 0 vector in Rm. Then, uh, because it's 1 to 1, that must be the only solution that works here, and because that is a solution, it has to be the only solution. Now that implies something else here. So remember that uh, if I take a times x, that's going to give you a linear combination of the columns of a. Because a times 0 equals 0 is the only solution, if this linear transformation is 1 to 1, then the only solution here is if x1, x2, x3 on out all are 0. It's the only way that can happen. And by definition, that means the columns of a are linearly independent. Um, And as we saw earlier, if I take A and put it in reduced row echelon form, it's going to have a pivot uh, in every column. Uh, all right, let's look at another example. So in this case, what do we have? Uh, this is going to go from R2 to R3. So I'm taking some vector in R2, call that x, and it's going to give us some vector in R3, we'll call that u. And so this is going to be equal to some uvw. If I put this in an augmented matrix, so I'm going to have 2, 1, minus 1, minus 2, 4, 1 is equal to uvw. And I'm just going to tell you what I get if I put this in reduced row echelon form. So in reduced row echelon form, it's going to be 1, 0, 1 half u plus 1 half v minus 1 tenth u, 0, 1, 1 fifth v minus 1 tenth u, and 0, 0 w plus one half u. That's a mess, right? So if you look in your book and watch what your author does in your book, your author doesn't use this because it doesn't matter. Basically, you know you're just going to get some mess here in the end, but each every row is going to depend on uvw because it depends on it initially. So uh, again, in the book, we don't worry about this and, and ignore that. But you should still look at this piece here 
and interpret it. All right. So what's important is looking at that. So now if I look at every column, every column has a pivot. All right. So this is the column for oops, A, and this is the column for B from here. This means that if you give me a value for u, v, u and v and w that uh, makes sense over here, then that uniquely determines b and it uniquely determines a. So this thing is one to one. Now notice, look at this row. This row does not have a pivot. So that means it's only going to work out if w plus 1 half u is 0. So that means there's a restriction on what I use here. So basically, the range here is going to be a plane. Right? It's going to be a plane given by uh, the span of these two vectors. And so there's a restriction. It's not going to be all of R3. So because I can't just pick any u, v, and w at random, it's not going to be onto. So that's the rows. Uh, there is a row without a pivot, so it's not onto, but every column has a pivot, so it's one to one. Sorry. All right. So the formal definition of onto is this is I'm going to take a transformation, I'm going to go from Rn to Rm. And basically, if I look at Tx equals b, there's no restriction on the b. Every value, every vector b in the codomain will work in here. So this is saying that the range is the same as the codomain. Okay. So for any value or any vector b in the codomain, I can find an x for this equation. Okay. So uh, we can say the range is the codomain, and we can always find a solution to this for every possible value of b in the codomain. So uh, what does that mean? That means, again, if this is a linear transformation, so this is a special case, we know that we can write t in terms of a matrix. And so this says that there's going to be a solution to this no matter what the b is. There's always going to be a solution to this. So there's going to be one or infinite solutions to the equation. Sorry. And the other thing is, again, this is a um, matrix multiplication. So I can think of this as x1 times the first column of A plus x2 times the second column of A, blah, blah, blah like so, um, I can find values of x1, x2, xn for any b in Rm. So that means the columns of A span the codomain, which is Rm. OK. Uh, and also, as we not noted before, if I put A in reduced row echelon form, I'm going to find a pivot in every row, and I can solve for every variable. 